Hello everybody, Eminem Storm here. Welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. In the last episode, we got a crew up to the Arbalest to prepare to get that vehicle moving towards its mission to Jewel. Unfortunately, on the return trip for the uh, Slingbow Shuttle, I guess you could call it, SSTO vehicle, that there was a bit of a mishap on return at landing that uh, caused the loss of the vehicle and crew. So that is unfortunate. Um, I kind of myself pretty fortunate that I haven't lost any Kerbals up to this particular point, but I knew it was going to happen some point. So there we go. Our first, our first casualties of the program. But we must move on, and so what I've done off screen is advance time for the ballista to get through its maneuver node for rendezvous to Duna. So that's been taken care of. I ran through the maneuver because it took a little while, and it is now on an intercept trajectory with Duna. So, let's go ahead and head over here. So the Arbalest, it has a maneuver node in one year, 96 days, that we need to worry about. The Ballista will enter Duna's sphere of influence in 310 days, 2 hours, and 24 minutes. So, we will actually enter the Duna's sphere of influence before... The Arbalest reaches its maneuver node. So that's good. Alright, so let's go ahead and... Can I warp to there? Here's the thing is, I've got science processing in our labs. Oh, let's just go ahead and fly it. Maybe we can do these in uh, 100 day increments. You know, advance 100 days, empty the science from the labs, and then uh, advance again. But actually, one of the things I want to do first before we do that is make some fine adjustments to the orbit to see if we can get a better... A better ultimate rendezvous. All right, so let's focus on over to Duna. All right. So where do we actually end up? Actually, that is not bad. Very close to what I'm most looking for. Five hundred and fifty six kilometers periapsis. All right, let's just turn on the RCS and let's provide it some small impulses and let's see what the results are see so the further out you can make any adjustments the larger the ultimate effect is going to be 
86,000 meters. I think that is good. Because I'm going to attempt an arrow break and we're going to see how that does. I believe you need to be below... Below 50,000 or 50 meter, uh, kilometers to begin interacting with Duna's atmosphere. I think that's the number. But we'll try to use our assists to see. All right. So for now, how are we doing as far as life support across the... The Arbalest definitely does not have expired EC. We have two years, 275 days of life support left on the Kerblon 1 station. So that should be fine. Because all the maneuvers we're going to be doing are going to be less than a year. I'm just, uh, just over a year. Okay, so... Oh, wrong button there. Just move our focus back to us. There we are. All right, so let's go ahead and advance. Around 106 days. Drez. We're going to have to go there at some point. All right, warp complete. Let's go ahead and transmit that science. Which that isn't really all that much. Oh, I have, do I have the reactors on? Oh, I do have the reactors on. We don't want the reactors on. Turn the reactors off. Off, off. We should be running perfectly fine off of solar power. Ooh, those guys are bleeding off a lot of heat. Okay, uh, data's been transferred. Okay. So, for now, what I want to do is switch over to... The station here. And we'll see what kind of science this thing has available. As soon as it loads. Uh, 
All right, there we are. 321. Science, yeah, there we go. Transmit the data. Wow, this thing still has a lot of data left to be processed. Which is good. Which is good. All right, there we go. Done. Okay, I'm gonna have to do this a couple more times. I mean, it probably isn't all that important, but I want to make sure that that is running, you know, as much as possible. All right, yep, you're still bleeding off a lot of heat. But, we're going to advance another hundred days or so. Hundred twenty-seven days? Yeah, we'll go with that. Now, I should... Be able to see Duna. There it is. I believe that's Jewel. Electric charge is fluctuating all over the place for some reason, but as long as it isn't depleting, that's good. even start to see Ike over there if you've got this at full resolution or if processing is precise enough in the video I can see it anyway all right warp complete let's go ahead and get that science transferred We'll have to switch over to the station one more time to do the same. I hope this whole uh, arrow breaking idea works. <laughs> okay. Science transmitted. All right, let's go ahead and focus back on the moon. And switch back over again one more time.
Alright, let's see how much we've got here. Two hundred and ninety one. Excellent. Transfer the data. No, that that's the crew, not the data. There you go. Transmit science. That's what I want. We're starting to build up a pretty good stockpile of science points. Alright, transfer done. Alright then, back to the ballista. And then we're going to be rendezvousing with Duna. Switch to... It's going to be a pretty aggressive rendezvous it looks like. So hopefully I'll be able to bleed off enough velocity in one pass. All right, here we are. All right, so let's go ahead and get us out to to our Duna rendezvous here, our encounter. How's everybody doing as far as life support? Good. All right, let's just warp right past the sphere of influence transition. Which is going to be three hours. Doing a periapsis is in three days. Okay. Now, first order of business. Transmit home any science that we have processed. Okay. Now, what do we have here? We have a visual observation of something. Astrogation module must be manned. The Vista astrogation module. Nobody's on there? There should be somebody there. No, apparently not. All right, well, we'll send Jeb to our astrogation module. In fact, we'll probably want to start transferring our crew anyway. We'll send Valentina there as well.
Good. And who else is here? Bill. Bill is an engineer. So I'm going to send Bill to the hydroponics module. There we go. All right, so now we should be able to do our visual observation, which we get 100% science for transmitting that back. So we'll go ahead and just transmit that back. And then we'll go ahead and send it to the lab. Another one. Plant growth experiment. We will send that to the lab. Gravity scan. Send it to the lab. And aquatic species observation. Send it to the lab. I'll transmit some of that data as well. All right, clean the experiments. All right, now we're gonna need to begin We are properly controlling from that part, right? Yes. Plant growth experiment and aquatic species observation. Not necessary. Now, there are some other things I want to do. How much data do we have in here? 397? Let's see, if I were to do an observe the materials bay. We get a whole bunch of data. All right, high rate, the high radiation environment caused a few of the samples to glow. It looks like it would be fun to paint the rocket with this. Okay, process in the lab. Observe the mystery goo. Process that in the lab as well. We could probably do a barometric pressure data. So, yep, send that to the lab. And a temperature data, send that to the lab as well. And that should do it. So then the lab should be able to clean those experiments. All right, now I've got 740 data in the lab. We're gonna be processing at 8.996 something or another per day. Excellent. So we've already brought those experiments back, you know, directly. So those are ones that I definitely wanna have processed through the lab to get the extra science out of them. Okay, so. For now, what I want you probably to do is to po point prograde. Don't use the RCS, just use whatever reaction wheels you have available. Which it seems that putting some reaction wheels on here was a bit of an oversight. Or not putting any reaction wheels on there was an oversight. 
um, any dedicated reaction wheels. The only ones we have are the ones that are like in the control modules and stuff. So they'll have to do. That's moving. Okay, so what I actually want to turn on is my landing guidance because we can show the landing predictions. Because then what that should do is let us know what's going to happen from the arrow breaking. So if I set up a maneuver node here four hours from now, And that node were to actually set that to zero. Um, let's do retrograde to slow us down a little bit. Not getting any orbit does not re enter. Sure, it does. There we go. Now we're getting uh, our re entry. Re entry simulation timed out. Landing prediction. Okay, I don't want to actually land. Okay, well that doesn't impact, okay? I'd like... is to get as low as I can without actually hitting the ground. That's going to hit the ground. Let's see. Forty thousand meters. I don't know what camera trajectory is. Is there another system here? Aircraft autopilot? No. Aircraft approach and auto land? 
Nope. Alright, well... I don't think we're going to impact. Yeah, I don't think we're going to hit the ground. And I think that's probably about as aggressive an arrow break as I'm comfortable doing. All right. All right, fire up the RCS. This beast flipped around. Keep an eye on my auto uh, mono propellant. Uh, stores. I'm gonna want some precise timing on this, so... We'll use the computer. Burning through that monopropellant because we have so many RCS nozzles. Alright, I think we can probably take it from here with just the reaction wheels. Is it not settled enough to auto warp yet? Auto warp tolerance. There we go.
All right, the engines are, uh oh, I don't have my reactors on. Reactors, reactors, turn them on. Unfortunately, I got a pretty good reserve of electric charge. Reactors are at full strength. Electric charge is re charging. I think I'm going to keep the reactors on until we have a stable orbit. So where are we at as far as... Alright, maneuver complete. Okay, SAS, RCS, flip us around prograde. Until periapsis, two days. All right. Oh, I think it's time to go ahead and start preparing for the air break. Stop rotation. Retract. The solar panels. Uh, retract the solar panels. There we go. We're going to be off 100% reactor power. Solar panels here are retracted as well. All right, turn the react uh, the RCS off. Can I actually start the retraction process? There we go. I'm a little worried about the lander. Hopefully it's going to be in the shadow of the, uh, of the heat shield. We're going to go ahead and inflate it. It should be. Yep. 
Maybe. Now, my concern is that this, this thing is tail heavy. This is where all the mass is. It might not want to keep its nose to the airstream. So, we'll have to see. May need to engage the RCS to keep the thing stable. We'll have to see. Alright, but I think we're all stowed and ready. Let's, uh... Let's uh, see what happens, eh? to prograde oh actually I do want to deactivate the reactors Because of the radiators. I'm going to need to retract them. It should be alright. We're not generating any additional heat. Radiators are stowed. Right, let's warp us in a little bit. Let the vehicle reorient the prograde. How long till periapsis? Six minutes. Alright, I think I'm going to advance to we're about um, 70 kilometers up. Maybe a hundred thousand kilometers up. Oh. We actually came very close to the Duna Lander. It's it's right over there. Somewhere. Alright. Go ahead and engage the RCS.
Hmm. Yeah, we're running on batteries. Okay. But we should be fine. We've got, um... 39 days worth of electric charge. One thing I'd actually like to do is rotate this around. Okay. We'll reach periapsis in two minutes. Once we're below 50,000, we should be interacting with the atmosphere. I don't know if we're going to bleed off enough. Thinking that this this guy, I mean, I could deploy its heat shield, if needed. All right, I cannot time warp any further. And right, we'll transmit our visual observations back. Gravity scan, send that to the uh, to the lab and then transmit the data. I'm still accelerating. Seems just kind of rotating a little bit there. It may not have been enough.
I wonder physics warp. We're still accelerating. We're not slowing down. Yeah, we didn't come in low enough. Ah, uh, well. Yep, now we're climbing again. Well, let's go ahead and uh, flip around a little. We're going to do a capture burn, and then we can see if we can do any further adjustments. All right, well, flip us around. Try and conserve as much of this uh, RCS as I can. Yeah, we just scraped the top of the atmosphere. And we are slowing down a little bit, but nowhere near enough. Okay. I'll have to actually turn the trajectories mod on if I want to do this again. To do proper calculations, even though that really, really tanks to performance on an already, you know, very complex piece of equipment. All right, let's get the, uh, let's get the radiators extended. Unfortunately, I did not put these radiators on an action group, which makes this rather tedious. Fire up the reactors. Electric charge. Good. And full throttle. I have no idea how long this is going to take to get captured. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording, and I'll be back once we have an actual uh, captured orbit. 
All right, well, I've got a captured orbit. And I am going to go ahead and, and bring this orbit down a little bit. And I'll probably want to raise that periopsis. There's an icon counter. Interesting. Eh, I could have used it. Oh well. I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. And we are now captured. Now I'm thinking what I'm going to have to do is. Enable that trajectories mod. Again. If I want to try and do an arrow break once more. And I don't really need to do the arrow break here. I mean, I got plenty of delta V in the engines to do all the maneuvers I could want. But. This is primarily an experiment with the system to make sure that the system is going to work. Because really, where they want to do the arrow break is um, with the other vehicle, the Arbalest, at Jewel. Either on Jewel itself or on Lathe to perform the arrow break. Because I want to conserve as much Delta V on that vehicle as I can. This one's got. Stupid amounts of Delta V for what we're trying to do. So, now that we've arrived, I think what I might have to do is end the episode here. We're kind of at a good time anyway. And then what I might need to do is plan for next episode to reattempt the arrow break again just to make sure that we're not gonna you know that the system's gonna be stable um, that we can maintain stability that nothing's gonna break off that sort of stuff So, yeah, we'll go ahead and stop here for today. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Go ahead, like, subscribe, and comment, and I will see you next time.